Your words cast spells. Now, if you think about that, you're like, my words cast spells. Patrick, what is it that you're talking about? We're gonna break that down and we're gonna break down much more. It is Patrick Tycoon Jones here. Folks, it's been a minute, but as you can see, I have a different background. So, you know your boy has moved, right? I had the house, just a quick update. Got out of the house, right? It was way too big for me and what it is that I was trying to do in my life. So, I'm now back in the high rise. I'm now back in the gallery. I'm loving life and we are transcending into a new chapter. That chapter is here. Another quick update, folks. I am literally four days out of surgery. So I had my Achilles uh, repaired. I was playing basketball with the fellas and next thing you know, ruptured my Achilles, fell to the ground immediately and I was in immense pain, folks. So that's a quick update. Now we're going into the episode. What is the episode about? The episode is your words cast spells. Now, if you think about that, you're like, my words cast spells. Patrick, what is it that you're talking about? We're gonna break that down and we're gonna break down much more. So folks, before we get into it, grab your pins, your pads, whatever you take notes on, your, your iPhones, you can be on your iPad, whatever it is, I need you to take notes. That's number one. Number two, right now, quick pause. That pause is for you to now forward it on to another tycoon before we get started because this is going to be a barn burner, but it's also going to be significant food for thought. It's gonna be something that you will take the next six months, you will pattern your life, your thoughts around that. So now let's get down to breaking it all out, okay? Your words cast spells. So think about this, when you go into kindergarten, you hear that rhythmic pattern, the, a, B, C, D, and that's how you learn your ABCs, right? So you learn your ABCs, notice, by a rhythmic pattern, okay? And that rhythmic pattern helps you memorize the ABCs. So then once you do that, the next evolution is putting those ABCs together to then do what? To spell, okay? Notice, your words cast spells. So now if we're spelling, okay, and now if we're learning the ABCs, and now we get older and we have thoughts, and those thoughts become things, right? And now since we're spelling and we're speaking out loud and we're writing things down and we're learning, then it's only right that your thoughts become things, but not only do they become things, your words actually cast spells. So if your words are casting spells, you have to be extremely careful what you say to yourself, what you say to others, right? Because there's two things that you can do. And folks, we haven't even got into it. But this is why it's so important to talk about this. There's two things that you can actually do. You can either speak a life into something and or a situation, or you can speak death into something or a situation, okay? So now, Let's get into it. Number one, be careful of the words you speak to yourself. Well, I just alluded to it. Why is it so important to be careful of the words that you speak to yourself? Because guess what? Once you continue to speak to yourself, the brain, your atmosphere around you, what it is that you manifest, has no other choice but to align with what it is that you tell yourself. That's the reason why you have to control your thoughts. That's the reason why you have to control your tongue. That's the reason why you have to control your words, right? Because if you're not doing that, then your whole life will then be in disarray. Have you ever looked at the person that you're like, man, and this comes kind of from being a hater, but it's like, man, that person seems like they have everything together, but I know they don't, right? That's what you think in your head. They can't, they can't possibly have everything together. But there's something that I say, so that's why I need you to go back to the other videos. If your mind, your body, your spirit, and your soul are all in alignment, 
guess what else is going to be in alignment? Your outside world, right? So your vision is going to manifest itself. And quick side note, folks, I'm living my dream right now. A lot of people don't understand, but when I was in the back of the truck mowing lawns with my father, right? I had dirt, grass in my hair, my do-rag on. You know, I was manifesting that whole time a bigger life, a bigger vision in the city, living life in a high rise, right? Having the two vehicles that I have, um, everything, the, the type of female that I want in my life, everything that I manifested when I was nine years old, I'm living it today. That's the reason why your thoughts become things. And that's the reason why your words cast spells. So are you casting positive spells back into your life? Okay, and it goes back to be careful of the words that you speak to yourself because it's paramount, right? It's a building block to your life and your life is the window to what you live out on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you see yourself kind of off track, if you see yourself in disarray, if you see yourself, okay, not on the trajectory that you wanna be on, then guess what? You need to go back to the drawing board, go back to what you're saying to yourself, what you think about yourself, how you view yourself, and you need to be in alignment with what it is that you truly want, okay? And it's that easy, it's that simple. I know a lot of you are like, well, Patrick, it's not that easy. Patrick, it's not that simple. I'm telling you right here, right now, it is that easy and it's that simple, period, okay? So keep that in mind, that's number one. Number two, think logically, never negatively. And what I mean by think logically is, you can think logically, you can be positive, right? But it's okay to be cautiously optimistic, which is another word for being positive, okay? And it's kind of another phrase for being positive. But it's not looking at everything with rose-colored glasses, because guess what? Through those rose-colored glasses, you have to wake up and you have to do the work, okay? We can have dreams all day. We can tell ourselves we're this. We can tell ourselves that. We can tell ourselves that we have $10 million in the bank. But if you don't wake up, formulate your plan, and go out and get it, then guess what? Nothing's ever going to manifest itself in the appropriate manner. Never, nothing's ever going to happen, right? For men, men, you're never going to have that woman that you want if you don't wake up and go get it, okay? You're never going to have that life that you want if you don't wake up and go get it, okay? You're never going to have anything like that if you don't wake up and go get it. Put the plan together and execute the plan. Another side note, I'll tell you, I, I went with my sister to Van Cleef, okay? And somehow we got on to the social media thing about what it is that I do in, you know, business. I'm in different places, you know, I'm in Canada, I'm in Toronto, I'm, you know, up and down the West Coast, I'm, I'm on the East Coast. You know, I'm traveling a lot and I share it with you guys. And for, for those of you who don't know that I share it, check me out on my Instagram, Patrick Tycoon Jones. And you'll see, right, my story mode that I share. I'm not big on pictures, but my story mode, I share it. And the sales associate, after we kind of explained to him my life and what I do on social media and why I give back, because I'm not trying to monetize this social media aspect. I'm just trying to educate, right, and give back to people. Um, he said, you know, you live sort of a James Bond lifestyle. And I thought about it, folks. I'm like, James Bond lifestyle. And obviously that's a movie that I followed ever since a kid. And then it dawned on me, you know what? He's right. I do live a James Bond type of lifestyle, right? And so that hit me hard. And the reason why it hit me hard is because when you go back to my childhood and some of the things that were kind of uh, manifested on me, yeah, hey, you're not smart, you're never going to be anything, you're never going to amount to anything, you know, you won't have a pot to piss in and or a window to throw it out of. You know, when I, when I was a kid, I kind of believed that. But now it's like, Patrick, you don't have anything to prove to anyone, right? You no longer have to fight that fight that you were fighting as a child to prove everyone wrong. You're living your dream. Okay, you're living that James Bond type of lifestyle. So now you need to take it a step further and you need to give back. And that's, again, why we're here today. So, again, thinking logically, never negatively, and it's okay to be cautiously optimistic. But again, folks, you got to wake up and go get it. Okay, a dream without action and a plan to effectively meet your goals 
is just a thought, okay? And it's just a thought that may not come true. It may come true, but you may luck up on it. So I don't want you guys to luck up on your dreams, your goals, your manifestations. I want you guys to be extremely intentional and go get it, okay? And these are ways that you can actually go get it. Next, number three, uh, treat yourself like someone you love. Now, this is huge. The reason why I say that this is huge is because, you know, here lately, uh, I kind of got into a rut. And you guys know I'm an open book. I have nothing to hide from you guys. And the reason why I got myself in a rut is because I deviated from what it is that I was trying to do. My dream, my goals, my vision, my aspirations, right? And then I was focusing on things that didn't align with who I am. Okay. And that's why it's so important to say, Hey, Patrick, you know what? Or tell yourself, it's okay that you got in a rut. Like this is life. It's okay that now for the next two months, I'm going to be in a cast. Can't do anything. I can't travel. Okay. But this is life and this too shall pass and it will pass. And it's okay that you have other little trials and tribulations going on. You're not perfect. You were never made and or created to be perfect. So it's okay. But now it's time to figure it out and get back to who I am and what I do. And that's exactly what it is. So I'm treating myself like someone I love. Because when I look in the mirror, I actually love myself. I love the decisions that I made. May not always be proud with the decisions that I make right? But it's all a learning lesson. And even me, Patrick Tycoon Jones, and I say this humbly speaking, I'm constantly learning. I'm going to make mistakes today. I'm going to make mistakes tomorrow. And I for damn sure made mistakes in my past, right? But it's okay to acknowledge those things. You have to get it right. And then once you get it right, learn from it, understand why you got in that position and then just get yourself out of it. It's a decision, that's all it is. So I have to practice what I preach, okay? So treat yourself like someone you love. And a lot of you people beat yourself up. A lot of people are, are extremely hard on yourself, but this is what I've learned, and I, I've learned this just in the past 24 to 48 hours. People will beat themselves up based on what other people project of your life. So you may be sitting next to someone that shouldn't even be in the same room as you, okay? They'll say something because, oh yeah, this is bro. Or, or yeah, this is sis. Oh, I love her. Oh, I love, you know, da, 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 da. But when you think about their credentials, when you think about their past, when you think about who they are versus who you are, and you're sitting here allowing them to tell you what your life should be, or what you should do, it, it doesn't align. It doesn't align and the two shouldn't coexist. So I say that to say this, be careful who you listen to because the same individuals who you listen to, you'll be doing better than, and the next thing you know, you'll be in the same rut as them, trying to figure it out because misery loves company. And I know some miserable folks. So just think about that, let that sink in and Here's the deal. We may be in a vulnerable spot when we listen to those folks, but you have to be able to identify that. You know what? I'm in a vulnerable spot right now. I'm going to talk to the individuals who are credible, but the individuals who are not credible, I'm going to keep them out. I, you have to, right? You have to keep them out because they're going to do nothing but pull you down. And you guys know what I said before, there's energy vampires, right? Energy vampires that would be like, hey girl, let's go on out, let's do this, or hey bro, let's go on out and let's do this. But their trajectory in their life, you are now taking 10 to five to three steps back. And so their gravitational pull has now have you operating, calibrating, right? Thinking, on a lower level, on a lower standard, okay? And that's gonna bring your whole vibration down altogether. Okay, so folks, in that, while you're treating yourself like someone you love, 
You also have to know who you should have in your circle and who you shouldn't have in your circle because not everyone is meant to go with you as you ascend, okay? As you grow, not everyone is meant to. Just because he was your bro back then, just because she was your sis back then, doesn't mean that he's meant to be your bro right now or she's meant to be your sis right now. And then also identify the people that come back into your life just to use you. Is that treating yourself like someone you love? And they're just using you by what? Oh, hey, I'm gonna crash at your spot. But guess what? You're gonna take care of my whole family. But I love you. Oh, and yeah, you gotta take care of your responsibilities and mine as well. But guess what? I love you. Is that treating yourself like someone you love? No. Okay? So again, folks, treat yourself like someone you love. Understand when you need to cut your grass and keep the snakes out. Also understand who should be in your circle during vulnerable times and who shouldn't be. And also understand it's okay to go through things. No one's perfect. All right. And as you go through those things, be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up because I was that person that would always beat myself up anytime I made a mistake. No one could ever beat me up more than I was beating myself up. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Number four, folks, we all pray. We all manifest things, but can you actually keep what you manifest and or pray for? So let's go to finances real quick. A lot of people will pray, oh, I want a million dollars. You get a hundred thousand. And that hundred thousand was meant for you to flip to a million, but you didn't realize that. So you go out and you spend it. You spend it on an AP, you spend it on some bottles at the club. And you have a memory and you have a watch, a souvenir, <laughs> but you don't have any money coming back. And you didn't realize you asked for a million dollars. God gave you a hundred thousand for you to flip and you didn't do what's right. My dad said one thing to me and, and he gave me a lot of valuable life lessons that I carry today. He said, son, you know, when you start making money, you have a responsibility as a man to save that money and to double that money, okay? And as a result, that's a core principle that I live by. Save that money and multiply it. Okay, that's us as a man, leader of a household. If you're a leader of a household, a leader of yourself, it doesn't matter. That's our responsibility. A lot of people want to show off for Instagram. A lot of people want to show off for another lady or they want to show off for the boys or their girls. But for what? To have nothing to show for at the end? Like it makes zero sense. And I actually was kind of caught up in that as well. Right? I was caught up in the whole, hey, I want to get this jewel. I want to get this watch. I want to get this, 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 this. And it, it was always, I want, want, want. I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to get. And guess what? I wasn't investing for a while. I got away from investing. I got, in, I got into consumerism. But for what? I woke up quick. Right? I saw my Amex bill and I said, oh, no. No, nah, this is it. Thank God I had the money to cover my Amex bill. But it's like, oh, no, this is stupid. This is for the birds. This is not who I am. So again, it also goes back to the earlier bullet point. Treat yourself like someone you love. We're not perfect. We'll fall into ruts from time to time. But it's our duty and obligation to identify what those ruts are. Snap out of it. Get back to who you are. Get back to what you're manifesting. Get back to your life. Get back to building. Okay? So again, can you keep what you manifest and pray for? And now I'm going into relationships. A lot of women will pray for a man. Get the man and haven't done any of the work to keep the man that they prayed for. Vice versa. Men, right? It's a two-way street. We'll pray for a good woman. Get the good woman. Not even know how to keep her. Right? So... That to me is very important. You can't ask God for something and then when you get it, not make the room for that blessing to come into your life. That's extremely important. Anything from the past 
should actually be removed. It should be removed. If it's not removed, then you're not ready for the blessing. Because you still are growing with the person. You still don't know the person. You still don't know how things are going to impact. So then, you know, they always say fumble the bag. Well, people are fumbling God's blessings every day. So when you ask for something, please make room for what you ask for because you're going to get it. You will get it, right? You'll get it. You'll get the money. You'll get the relationship. You'll get the man. You'll get the woman. It may not look like what you're typically accustomed to. The blessing might, may not even feel like the blessing that you asked for, but you don't realize six months down the later, down the road, it will manifest into exactly what it is that you asked for originally. Right? You don't know the relationship that you asked for. It may look a little bit different. It feels right. But if you don't have the things removed out of your life, then it goes by the wayside. Then you fumble the bag. You fumble the relationship. You fumble, you fumble the manifestation. You fumble the prayer. And that's not even fair to yourself. We're talking about you. We're not talking about the other person. That's not fair to you. But you got to do the work, folks. You got to remove things from your life. Your significant other, especially in today's world that we live in, everyone's going to be hypersensitive to what? I like this person a lot. I love this person a lot. But let me see what's going on in the past. Let me see what's going Everyone's going to be hypersensitive to that. I don't care who they are. I don't care what title they have, how much money they're making. Everyone's going to be hypersensitive. Why? Because we all know social media, especially Instagram, is a very negative tool. And that tool can then open up things and or previous communication and or your photo album and or friends, whatever it is that you need to remove that's keeping you from growing, right? And keeping you and kind of blocking your blessings, I should say. Those are all the things that need to go, okay? So keep that in mind. Five, do you have a daily mantra? What is a mantra, first and foremost? It's words that you put together in sequential form that aligns with your thoughts that become things aligns with words that cast positive spells over your life and or Bible scriptures that you read to yourself. It's positive reinforcement that you tell yourself to align yourself with what it is, your higher calling, your higher self, your higher power. It aligns you with that. So what's your daily mantra? What are you telling yourself every day? When you wake up, how are you reinforcing positivity within your life? And I need you to think about that, right? Because I don't have that answer. But what I'm doing is I'm planting the seed to then manifest itself so you can actually say, you know what? Patrick has a point. I don't have a daily mantra. I need to have something that's positive. And a daily mantra is not waking up first thing in the morning, listening to someone else's words. A daily mantra is waking up in the morning, listening to your own words and or praying and or whatever it is that you do that gets you into a positive rhythm. Okay. Again, going back to the rhythmic pattern, you understand I tie things back together. We learn our ABCs. We reinforce letters that we formulate into the words by a rhythmic pattern. A, B, C. That's rhythmic, right? That's how we learn. We're all, we're all vibrating. That's a rhythmic pattern. Okay. So just keep that in mind. What's your daily mantra? If you don't have one, you need to put pen to the pad and start writing, okay? And make sure it aligns with your thoughts, with your vision of your higher self, your higher calling, your higher power. Last but not least, number six, do you like what you see when you look into the mirror? When you look in the mirror, what do you see, okay? When you look into the mirror, are you seeing someone who's loving, someone who's kind, someone who's empathetic, someone who's aligning with their higher vibration, their higher self, their higher thoughts? Do you see someone that you're proud of? Or do you see an individual who is shackled by their previous thoughts, 
their past, you know, who they were before, what, what was done to them? Do you have a victim mentality? Because those are all things that you need to free yourself of, right? Can you smile at yourself? Are you doing the positive things to reinforce positivity in your life? Right? These are things that we have to do. Like, really look at yourself. Next time you get out of the shower, look at yourself. What do you tell yourself? I know what I tell myself. I'm that guy, right? I am that guy. The guy that I've always wanted to be, right? I'm still growing. I'm still a work in progress. It's not the finished product in front of you. But that's what I tell myself. I look at myself now. And I love myself. I can smile at myself. I look into my eyes now and I don't see someone who's sad. You know, I see someone who is thriving, who loves life, who's very optimistic about life. Someone who has a future, someone who's going somewhere. Right? This is just the beginning. But what do you see? Do you see uncertainty? Right? If you're seeing those negative things, you need to realign mind, body, spirit, and your soul. And we'll address all of that stuff, okay? So to all my tycoons, this has been fun. Hopefully it is nothing but food for thought. You know what I ask you to do. Please share this with another tycoon that needs the knowledge. And until we meet again, Lock in with me because you know I'm locked in with you.